NASA is going all in on the moon this year. Yesterday, SpaceX successfully launched another moon lander. With that, three robot landers are on their way to the moon, with Blue Ghost leading the charge. How are those missions progressing? In today's episode, we'll follow their exciting journey and dive into what lies ahead. Ghost Rider in the Sky, Blue Ghost, has reached the moon. Firefly posts today on X, T minus four days until we land on the moon. Blue Ghost will reach her final destination no earlier than 2.34 a.m. CST on March 2nd. Along with that announcement was a sweet close-up footage of the moon. The lander is now orbiting the lunar surface, preparing for its descent. The advantage of taking the scenic route is that Firefly has the opportunity to fine-tune Blue Ghost maneuvers based on real-time flight data. Additionally, the spacecraft can capture stunning footage of the moon, which has been sent back to us for viewing. For example, on February 18th, the spacecraft captured a close-up of the moon's far side, an area unseen from Earth, after the lander transitioned from a high elliptical orbit to a lower one about 120 kilometers above the surface. In addition to flyby footage showcasing the moon's rugged terrain, marked by impact craters, the spacecraft also snapped breathtaking images of the lunar south pole. In one of the latest footage captured by the lander, we can see the Earth rising and setting behind the moon, offering a stunning celestial display. Joseph Marlin, deputy chief engineer for Blue Ghost, is fascinated by the beauty of the moon, quote, the latest moon footage captured by Firefly's Blue Ghost lunar lander is completely surreal. Of course, we had an idea of how the imagery would look, but seeing the real life footage of the moon's craters and boulders from our very own spacecraft is such an inspiration and really hits home how close we are to our final destination after all the hard work we've put into this mission. While in lunar orbit, Blue Ghost achieved an interesting milestone. One of its payloads successfully acquired and tracked Global Navigation Satellite System GNSS, signals for the first time ever in lunar orbit, setting a new record. This groundbreaking feat was accomplished at an impressive distance of 246,000 miles. Now why does this matter? GNSS is a satellite navigation system that utilizes satellites to provide autonomous geolocation with global coverage. The term GPS may be more familiar to you. It is also a global navigation satellite system. Today, GNSS constellations enable crucial services such as navigation, banking, power grid synchronization, cellular networks, and telecommunications. So the same thing that gives you directions on Earth, now its signal has been picked up on the Moon. This record was achieved thanks to the Lunar GNSS Receiver Experiment, or LUGRI. It is a collaborative NASA Italian Space Agency payload on the Firefly Blue Ghost Mission 1, designed to demonstrate GNSS-based positioning, navigation, and timing on the Moon. It will receive and track signals from the GPS and Galileo satellite constellations during the Earth-to-Moon transit and throughout an entire lunar day on the Moon's surface. The Lugri payload features a robust, low-mass, and power-efficient design, enabling it to endure the harsh cislunar and lunar surface environments while fitting seamlessly on the lander. It consists of four key components, a high-gain antenna optimized for GNSS L1E1 and L5E, five bands with an integrated filtering stage, a front-end assembly with a low-noise amplifier, two GNSS receivers in a dual cold-redundant configuration managed by a supervisory board, and coaxial RF cable harnesses connecting all the components. The successful capture of GNSS signals by this device proves that GNSS constellations can be used for navigation during transit to around and potentially on the moon. It also highlights the power of combining multiple GNSSS constellations, such as GPS and Galileo, for enhanced navigation. Just imagine a future where, on the moon, 
we can simply turn on the GPS on our phones to navigate the lunar surface, just as we do here on Earth. After landing on the lunar surface, Luji REE will operate for 14 days, aiming to set another milestone, the first ever reception of GNSS signals on the moon. Not just Luji REE, but other payloads on Blue Ghost seem to be in good condition as well. According to Firefly, all 10 NASA payloads remain healthy as Blue Ghost approaches its final destination and continues to support science operations along the way. The Lexi telescope, developed by NASA, Boston University, and Johns Hopkins University, has been operating several hours each day, conducting checkouts and initial commissioning in preparation for capturing images from the lunar surface. So it seems like all that's left to do is land this lander on the moon. First, Blue Ghost will execute a 19-second descent orbit insertion at the 100-kilometer paralune to begin its descent. During the final hour, the lander will use vision-based terrain relative navigation and hazard avoidance to assess its position and detect craters, slopes, and rocks. It will then select a safe, hazard-free target within the landing zone. Blue Ghost's RCS thrusters will pulse as needed throughout the descent, ensuring a smooth and controlled landing. The Blue Ghost thruster system, designed and built in-house, features eight reaction control system RCS thrusters, named Spectre. These thrusters generate a total of 1,600 newtons of thrust, maintaining orientation during maneuvers and adjusting the throttle as needed for a smooth, soft landing. Blue Ghost is scheduled to touch down in Mare Crisium on March 2nd, where it will operate its payloads for a full lunar day, approximately 14 Earth days. On March 14th, Firefly plans to capture high-definition imagery of a total eclipse as Earth obscures the sun above the moon's horizon. Then, on March 16th, Blue Ghost will record the lunar sunset, gathering data on how solar forces cause lunar dust to levitate and create the iconic lunar horizon glow a phenomenon first observed by Eugene Cernan during Apollo 17. After sunset, Blue Ghost will continue its mission, operating for several hours into the lunar night. This mission is part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative. It is a NASA program that hires companies to send small robotic landers and rovers to the moon. Just as NASA previously contracted with SpaceX to build rockets and spacecraft to carry cargo to the International Space Station, the government agency is paying several American companies to deliver science and technology to the lunar surface. Another lunar lander just launched yesterday as part of the CLPS program is the intuitive machine's Nova Sea lander, named Athena. It is a 14-foot hexagonal cylinder on six landing legs that will shuttle several NASA and commercial payloads to the lunar surface to test exploration vehicles and the first communications network on the moon, drill and analyze samples of lunar soil, and map precious resources like water ice. Since it's a metal locks propelled lander, the spacecraft will follow a fast, direct trajectory to the moon. This approach is essential to prevent the cryogenic fuel from boiling off. As a result, it will reach the moon relatively quickly, just a few days after Blue Ghost, despite launching a month later. Athena is lifted off from Kennedy Space Center, atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 shortly after sunset yesterday evening, embarking on a 10-day mission to the Mons Mouton Plateau near the lunar South Pole. For this mission, the company not only updated its lander design but also expanded its focus beyond lunar landers. One of the payloads aboard IM-2, the Micro Nova Hopper, is a 29-inch, 77-pound rocket-propelled drone crafted to explore regions that ground rovers can't access. Dubbed the Hopper, in honor of computer science pioneer Grace Hopper, this innovative drone will measure surface temperatures and assess water distribution using instruments from Hungary and Germany. Though built for a 15-mile range, it will perform five shorter parabolic hops and level flights, reaching difficult areas, including a crater that has never been exposed to sunlight. At the landing site, NASA's Polar Resources Ice Mining Experiment 1, Prime 1, will deploy a meter-long drill and a mass spectrometer 
to search for and analyze subsurface resources that could support future human exploration. The experiment will also measure forces and temperature. Additionally, Blue Origin's Honeybee Robotics will operate the regolith and ice drill for exploring new terrain, Trident, which will drill three feet into the surface. The drill will bring regolith samples to the surface, where the spectrometer will analyze the composition of volatile gases released from the material. The lander also carries a bunch of other payloads like a laser retroreflector array from NASA, a lunar surface communication system from Nokia Bell Labs, and a Japanese rover called Yaoki. Believe it or not, the Japanese lander accompanying the Blue Ghost, the ISPACE's resilience lander, also part of the commercial lunar payload services. Although traveling on a much slower route than the Blue Ghost, this lander has recently achieved certain successes. On February 15, 2025, the company announced that its resilience lunar lander successfully completed a flyby of the moon, passing within approximately 8,400 kilometers of the lunar surface. This marks a historic first for a Japanese private commercial lunar lander. Resilience is now on a trajectory toward deep space, set to perform orbital maneuvers that will return it to the moon in preparation for lunar orbit insertion. While the exact date and time of the insertion maneuver are yet to be determined, it is expected to occur in early May. This mission is critically important for ISPACE, following the failure of its first lunar landing attempt in April 2023. That mission ended in the crash of its lunar lander, due to a malfunction in the altitude recognition system, which incorrectly interpreted the spacecraft's position above the moon's surface. A successful landing this time would mark a major milestone for Japan's growing private space sector. If the mission succeeds, ISPACE will become the first private company from Asia to successfully land on the lunar surface. ISPACE's CEO, Takeshi Hakamata, said during a news conference, this will be a new challenge for us. As a company that has experienced the frustration of failure, ISPACE understands the importance of learning from it and trying again. We aim to achieve a successful moon landing and deliver excitement to the world. The Resilience Lunar Lander is designed to deliver a micro-rover named Tenacious, developed by ISPACE's European subsidiary to the Moon Sea of Frost slightly farther west than in the previous attempt. Tenacious, measuring 54 centimeters in length, will collect lunar regolith, soil, which the company plans to sell to NASA. In addition to the rover, Resilience will carry a diverse range of payloads, showcasing global collaboration and innovation in lunar exploration. Among these are a lunar water electrolysis device from Takasago Thermal Engineering and a self-contained module from Euglena, designed for experiments in lunar food production. And just for extra, Resilience is also carrying the Memory Disk, a collaborative project with UNESCO and the U.S. innovation platform Barrel Hand. This disk contains 275 of the world's languages, along with various cultural treasures. NASA is no longer alone in its quest for space exploration. These private landers not only represent the potential for other companies to reach the moon, but also symbolize the unity of those sharing a common goal, sending humans to worlds we've never seen before. <laughs>